All right, guys. So it's the beginning of January 2024. And I've had some questions about doing a state of the collection. And I thought before I did that, because that I'm going to have to break that up. There's, there's, I don't have a total count. I'd have to look. It's around 80 ish knives. And that would take a long video. So I kind of broke it up last year and did like this maker, this maker, this maker, something like that. But I thought what might be kind of fun is to really recap the purchases that I got in 2023. Now, I've got a few things here on the table. I got them all here real quick, and I'm going to go through them in order. But first off, some some honorable mentions, or, or not knives, but I did get the tactile turn pen in zirconium with the titanium Damascus they call it um, Bolt there. I love this pen. It's awesome. Okay. And I also bought a torch from Yellow Day Energy. Super cool. Single emitter. Great deal. Bought this at Blade Show West. Then I got a few gifts this year. I got the new breed um, Clydesdale, which is kind of cool. Aussie Mike gave that to me. Um, I also bought the Zirconium Olite to go with the Zirconium Pen. So I thought that was a great combo. And this is really the size light that I love. I really like that size. And then another really special gift was this Peter Stain Latch 22. I got this from Peter and his wife, Joyce, uh, from South Africa. It is my first and only currently South African made knife, and it's fantastic. Now, I've done videos on all of these items that you're going to see, okay? So that's the stuff that I kind of bought or was gifted that wasn't a knife necessarily. So the rest of these, let's go through in order of what I bought throughout 2023. Now, I don't have the dates, but I can tell you my first purchase was the Tim Galleon XL Junkyard Dog. I've done videos on all these, so I'm not going to go through a lot of the details and or who I bought them from and all that kind of stuff. Um, just going to kind of bang through these so it's not a huge video. There are 15 knives that I bought, and they're not all going to fit on the screen, so I'm not even going to try. Okay, next up was the Frank Fisher Fury. Now, technically I owned, I had possession of both of these in December of 2022, but we didn't consummate the marriage, if you will, until the first couple of days of January, 2023. So technically they are 2023 purchases. Now there's one knife that I can't find. I just moved recently and there's like two knives I know that are missing. I'm sure they're in a box somewhere in the garage. Um, the Crispy Donut community made a donut sprinkled theme fixed blade. It's small. And the other knife that I can't find is a Red Horse Knife Works mini Hellraiser fixed blade. Again, really small. That one I didn't buy in 2023, the Hellraiser. But the CDC uh, fixed blade I did get in 2023. I, it's in a box hidden away somewhere. All right, next up is the Shira Goroff RJ Martin collaboration. This is the soft overkill with aftermarket scales from Department 13. This one is, at the time of filming, available for sale. And I do have the original scales and the box and paperwork and all that stuff. So if you're interested, hit me up. Next is the Phil Harvey Fixed Blade, Kiridasha, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I am a huge, huge Phil Harvey fan, and so I had to have it. It wasn't that expensive. It's brand new, sitting in a drawer, <laughs> comes out for pictures sometimes. All right, uh, so next up, was the Frank Fisher Battle in carbon fiber frame lock. 
This is a total user. And Tim up in Canada, man, this is just an amazing, amazing example of a Frank Fisher battle. It's super thin, so it carries super well. The, the action and the sound is just so satisfying. It's really freaking cool. All right, so then the next one, and these came pretty close together, is the Todd Senior Battle Prototype. Full dress. Samai Blade, uh, Zerkatai, Mokutai, Zerkatai uh, Scales. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, this one is super cool. Little drop shetty. I do have the tools. I can tighten that pivot a little bit. Um, and I do from time to time. It does wiggle itself loose a little bit. I just haven't been brave enough to pull it all the way out and put some Loctite on it. Okay. But this was um, an auction piece and I didn't intend to win the auction. I intended to just bump it up because there was a lot of time left. I figured, well, I'll put in one more bid and hopefully get things going again. Oops. Be careful what you try to do. Next up is a rebuy. This is a Dama Steel Bladed Hellraiser P-Series. So it's their production run that came and Ed actually built this with the Dama Steel Blade back in the U.S. once it came in. This has been um, bought and sold a couple times between Justin and I. So it's with me now probably uh, forever. I mean, I'm not going to say forever, but I don't think Justin wants it back at this point. And I don't necessarily want to sell it back. So, yeah, this one's just super cool. I'm a big Hellraiser fan, as you guys know, because the next one up is this Midtech Bacon Damascus Hellraiser that I got from a good friend, Kevin. He's a big Red Horse Knifeworks uh, collector and a, a big guy to begin with. And we've been friends for many years now. He was moving some stuff. He reached out and asked if I was interested. And I said, absolutely. Carbon fiber scales, bacon, Damascus, flipper. Uh, how could I, as a Hellraiser fan and collector, how could I say no to this guy? All right. So where am I at? All right. Next up. RJ Martin Modulator. It's basically a smaller Q36. Uh, I did not get this in 2023, just for size comparison. So the modulator is just a smaller version of the Q36, essentially. Probably some little differences. All titanium, orange G10 backspacer. Timascus pocket clip. And S110, I think, on this one. And this one is also, at the time of filming, currently for sale. So if you're interested in this, hit me up. I will make you a great deal. This one comes with what you see. There is no box and papers and all that. You just get the knife. Next up, a couple of big boys. <clears throat> the Vander Mulen Blade Works. Hamasaurus, one of only four or five ever made. And yeah, it barely fits on screen. Huge five and three quarter inch blade, give or take. I've done videos on this too. You can go check it out and get all of the details. It is not the most comfortable to handle. It's not the most comfortable to carry, but it's fantastic and awesome. And when my very, very good friend, JP, him and I worked out a deal. He shipped it to me to film with the prototype of the next knife I got, the six-inch instigator. This one is mine. This is number six of the six-inch instigators. JP's was number one prototype. So he sent me the prototype and the homosaurus so that I could film them together to show comparisons. And... At the time Jeff opened his books, I reached out to Jeff and asked if he could make me a homosaurus. He said, nope, I'm not making these anymore. Out of luck. 
He offered me an instigator. I said, can you make one to match the Homosaurus? And I think he did a fantastic job. He was also very surprised that JP had sold the Homosaurus because he actually made the Homosaurus special for JP. But because we're kind of keeping it in the family, so to speak, he was okay with me buying it. And he made me a six inch instigator to match. And yes, that is a six inch blade and it is sharp as hell and amazing as all get out. Is that still a term? I don't know. Now I feel like my dad. Okay. Next up. An old school Frank Fisher battle. Stonewash, compound grind, titanium, uh, just bare bones, orange peeled scales. I'd like to say plain Jane, but nothing Frank ever did is plain Jane, but just crazy. I had to have it. Um, this one, actually, my friend Anthony bought, shipped it to me. I got to check it out. I went on a hunt, found a different early one that I bought. And that one fit Anthony's collection better. So he and I traded. This one has the compound grind. Mine had a single grind, but it had black scales. So it matched the other Fisher knives in Anthony's collection. So it worked out. Along with trading the knives, we also kind of did some horse trading and I got the original Red Horse Knife Works knife, the Ronin. It's the first knife that Ed Kim ever made and ever sold with hodgepodge parts and pieces straight out of a printership. I've done a full video on it. You can go check that out if you like, um, but I'm super honored. Ed is super excited that I have this in my collection as well, being such a fan of Ed and his brand. Uh, also, when I bought the other old school battle, I got this PST, a pointy stabby thing that Frank Fisher made out of just a scrap piece of Damas Damascus. And there's a little tiny blade on there. It's silly. It's dumb. It's not very um, practical for anything. It kind of goes along with that Phil Harvey fixed blade and it just sits in the drawer. All right, uh, somewhere along the lines also, I traded and I got a Shiro Ursus. I had kind of a trade deal. I started with something cheesy and I kind of traded my way up to the Ursus. And it's a very cool knife that is also for sale. And I have the full box and papers and all of that. If you are interested in this guy, hit me up. I would love to send this off to a new owner. It is a very, very cool knife. It just is time to move on. Okay. Last, but certainly not least, the biggest, most expensive, the most prestigious, like, I don't know. The biggest, the, uh, the king battle. It's Frank Fisher, um, and it's dubbed the king, not by me. No, no, no. Frank and the original owner, Abe, dubbed this the king battle. Timascus backspacer, Timascus scales, um, sand my bolster, sand my blade, four and a quarter inches of awesomeness, sand my pocket clip. Like, yeah, it's just amazing. Crazy thick titanium liners. Like, yeah, everything about this is massive and it is absolutely the king. It was just something I had to have in my collection. The current owner before me and I had been talking about this for quite some time and he was chasing something much more expensive and he let it go right around the beginning of December. By the time we worked it out, I was on a business trip and it shipped to me. And yeah, this is, yeah, I, I can't say much more about it. You guys know. 
if you know, you know, type of a thing. But there you go. That's a, a quick recap, maybe not so quick, of my acquisitions via trade, via gifts, via purchases of 2023. I should note, while this was the most expensive knife or EDC type of a thing that I bought, I also bought this house that I am standing in and filming in, in 2023. So that by far was the most expensive purchase of 2023, if not my entire life thus far. Yes, it was the most expensive purchase. The previous house I bought was less expensive than this house. So yes, this is the most expensive thing I have ever bought is this house which has, I know it doesn't look like it, it has changed my collecting and my discretionary money to buy knives and watches. As you can see, I did not buy any watches in 2023. Maybe 2024, I will pick up a watch. There are a couple floating around that I would like to get. However, I, I need to sell a few things to pay myself back for the king battle. And then I can start to think about what is the next knife? What is the next watch? Um, or what is the next house project? I need a garage floor because there's cracking. I need a new driveway because there's cracking. There's decomposed granite in the backyard, which is just bleh. Don't know why people thought that was a good idea, but it gets stuck in the treads of your shoes and you track little rocks all into the house almost every time I come in from outside. Yeah, so I've got some projects around the house to do. So 2024 might be light on the EDC stuff. We'll see. Let me know if you've got any questions about any of these things. There is a video of, I believe, every single item up on my channel. I'm not gonna link them all down below because that just seems like a lot of work. You guys know how to use YouTube. Let me know your thoughts. If you have a particular question about something, again, please let me know. I would love to chat about it. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.